today I want to show you the start of what's called making a dummy when you're publishing something. Does anybody know what a dummy is in publishing? <laughs> in publishing. A draft? <coughs> kind of a draft. Um, like, it's not, it's not like when your first draft or your second draft, it's, it's not, it's also not your final draft. It's like um, something that's trying to get to the final piece. Okay. Because I know that, uh, 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 the normal kind of dummy is like a uh, mannequin. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to add to what Christopher and Atticus said? Yeah. Um, so, um, it's like if you, um, it's like you, you print out like your first draft and then you have someone read it and while they're going along they would edit it um, on pens. It's part of the process. I love that analogy. A crash test dummy. Crash test test dummy tests it out to see if the seatbelt's gonna work, um, where you if you're if the airbag's gonna work. The dummy in publishing is to see if your overall layout and design is going to work and if you need to do any tweaks. It might be, like Joe said, some more editing because you might find a mistake right out there. But it's also just to kind of test drive it. Great analogy. So what you need to do is to do this dummy, how we're going to do it for the magazine. And each way is a little bit different. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that most of you want your magazine full pages like this rather than in half. If somebody wants to do it in half, we can talk about that. But I'm going to go with this. So I set the requirements. Does anybody remember the requirements of how many pages? Four to eight. Four to eight pages. Good job. And a page, this is actually two pages. One side by two sides. One piece of paper by two pages. So this would be how many pages? Everybody. Four. 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 Okay. Uh, and this would be, Honey. some of you might end up with more, but it, it usually has to be in multiples of two <coughs> because there's a front and back. But the cover could count or not count. Because, you know, on some magazines, some scholastic magazines, especially in the younger grades, the feature article starts on the front page and there's only this uh, half picture or a quarter picture up here. Some, like ours, tend to be a full cover, like a regular magazine, and then the feature starts in here. I have printed out the materials that your friend 65, who's in um, Mr. Alex's class, right? And I'm going to use hers to show you how to do it. So first I'm going to do, I have eight, page, eight pages, four pieces of paper, and I'm going to, I could choose to staple them together, or I could choose and I'm going to do it as close to possible. Again. The other thing I could choose to do to get them there is to line up the pages just to, to bind it and take a long piece of tape and put it. Come on over here, fill in the caster so you can see this. So you put it half and half. See how it's half hanging over? And then you just flip it over and do it. And that's another way of binding the book. Yes, magazine. Um, would you do it like, would you do both? Or you, I, you could choose one is what I would do. I just did both on here to show you. Yes. Um, but if, like, if you had a page in the middle, would that one fall out if you just taped it? It shouldn't, but if it does, then... But this is just your dummy, that's your write-up. So you, you might have to do another piece of tape good on the inside scene. Yes? Do we put up, are we going to take our dummies to like a crash lab and test them into ours? Like Would that make sense? <coughs> Are we just going to do that up to there to like practice putting together the magazine or are we going to like print out copies of our articles and watch and see? Okay, that's what this lesson is about. So I'm going to do, I'm in my plan right now, I'm going to 
use a pencil. I want this to be a regular cover, not starting the article. Though. So this one, um, so I'm going to put the theme, and I'm going to put it in pencil because I didn't type out, oh, I can't even spell that. I'm going to put that up there in pencil because that's going to be the title theme. I didn't print those out. I might have printed them out. You might choose to do that. And uh, I want a picture here. And I might know what the picture is, so I might write it there what I want, or I might have it printed out in black and white, because this part is in black and white, because it's a rough girl. Uh, her back to the kitchen, please. <coughs> and then I'm going to put the table of contents here. That's my idea. I might choose to do it with the table of contents here. I might choose to do it up here, where you, where you want it. I can't fill out the table of contents. I might just call it contents when I, in my final draft because I can't fill it out because I don't know where things are going yet. And then I'm going to look at my articles here. I have Getting to California, Tools to Bring to California. And when I printed this out, it went on two pages, but do I need to like have that in my magazine, this whole blank page and this little credit? No. So I'm going to cut that out and put it up here. And actually, I'm going to do that right now so I don't forget where it is. So you need to have scissors when you do this. Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, um, I've, uh, I've used um, a lot of images on one of my articles, but when I, when I entered them, I didn't cite. Then you didn't do it correctly, and you'll have to go back and cite I, them. I, I, Unless they're your own images. I went, I, I went to insert image. If you, if you, the directions were all along that you had to cite any images, and that's something you learned with Mrs. Smart and with me. So, okay, so I didn't cut this quite right, so I'm going to do this. Sometimes glue sticks work really well, sometimes, you know, glue sticks don't work really well, so in those cases you might need to staple or tape. And I have to trim this more. So if you find, like our friend here, that you don't have citations for your images, you're going to need to go back and fix that part before you do your, um, your dummy. So, I have this page. I have opinion article. I have a two page. I have my learning activity, what would you bring to California? I have my bibliography, getting to California. And again, that's another one of those that are there. No more gold. And the California Gold Rush. This is my feature article, the California Gold Rush. And in this size font, I have two copies of it. This size font, I might choose to make it in a smaller font as I get going. So you might end up doing three or four or five dummies to get it just right. <coughs> yes. Um, when you, if you click the research button and find a picture on there and then just drag it to the page, it automatically cites it. Yeah, so that's what Mr. Yeah, so there shouldn't be a problem at all with that. So I'm going to say I want my feature article on the first two pages. So I'm going to just staple those right there. Now, yeah, they're not going to fit exactly because the pages are there. But right now, this is what I want to do. Just to get an idea, because this is just to get the idea. The other thing I might want to think about doing is adding what? Page, page, numbers. page numbers. Remember, you have to have at least 10 Nonfiction text features, page numbers count, title and subtitle count, pictures, illustrations count. Not, you can't have, you, ten pictures don't count, but ten different nonfiction text features. So a title to your magazine counts as one, a table of contents counts as one. So you're going to do this with your magazine. And you might decide after you get going, um, uh, you know what, I want to use a smaller font because I want all of this to fit on only one and a half pages of my magazine. So then you would have to do another dummy. Yes? I have two questions. One, what if you go to the annotations? Then you're the credits. Then, then in the credits, in the bibliography, you would say either photos by Hannah Sinclair or images by Hannah Sinclair. <coughs> Can you look at a picture and throw it yourself? Yes, and that's perfectly fine. And then there's, again, it's illustration, because it's not a photo. Illustrations by Hannah Sinclair. Yes, sir? Yeah, I have two questions. Um, one, um, so on the 
the Google Drive thing, if you do the research and you look up an image and then drag it on, it automatically cites. But if you do insert image, it doesn't. That is my understanding. And also, um, are we getting, like, if I put an image on one page, do I put, do I cite the resource for that image at the bottom of that page, or do I put the citation on the video? You can do either or both. So I'm not going to complete this dummy for a couple of reasons. One, I'm going to work on it with the other two classes to show them. And two, um, I think that was enough to get you started. Do you see where your where it is? Now, you can only do this stuff. I know a couple of people are ready. A couple of people are close to being ready. But I wanted you to know what the next step was if you think you're finished. You'll also be doing, like Joe had said, when it gets in this dummy format, you'll be you will be having somebody proofread um, and edit to look for those final capitalization and mistakes like that. That isn't on the progress track sheet that making the dummy. Yeah, I just but, forgot to do it. Yeah, that's okay because I I didn't think of that beforehand. But I I think that this will be a really helpful tool as we get um, going towards completion of this project, and it'll give you a sense. It's also something that will waste a lot of color ink as we're getting it. There. A couple more questions about this. Yes. Everybody's at a different point, and you just need to keep working on it. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, okay. So um, right now I'm still working on learning activity and finish it. Did I uh, wait till um, I finish with all the articles to put the citations? Um, should I do the dummy? Um, you cannot do the dummy until all your articles are ready. So, and I would find it easier to do the citations as you go along because then you have less backtracking to do. But that's a decision you'll have to make as a researcher and a writer. You had a question? Okay. Yes. You can do it, you can do the book review because that's a really long book to read and pretty intense. So you can do kind of a book preview, a book preview, a book teaser, a book trailer kind of thing and say, and you can be honest in your review so far, in what I've read so far, this is a real book. Or you can, and you can also include things other reviewers say, and you can cite somebody else who has read the book. Either one online or somebody you know in person who's read it, like your mom or Mrs. Bear or something like that. Yes, sir. Oh, um, have I beat up the dummy yet, or AKA have I passed the dummy? Yet? Um, we got to get your crossword puzzle done before you get to. So that. what's the dummy, by the way? Oh, Josie made a good um, analogy. It was close to what you said, but don't Josie described it as a, a like a crash test dummy. You're, you're testing out where the things are going to go and how it's going to work in your final copy. So this, and Lynn Plord, when she was here, talked about the dummy. Some of you may have remembered that, but she did mention that with us. So we can start to work out the Yep, yep. And remember that big green labs cover thing that I showed you? You're not doing that till we're, till the dummy is, is dummied. That the dummy is dummed? It, okay. 